Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Audrey Marshall, the Work-Based Learning Coordinator for Auburn High School. And with me today, we have Amy Hanna, our career coach, who also is the career coach for Opelika High School. And then we have Dr. Cordelia Brown, who is the senior lecturer and director of the Engineering Academic Excellence Program for Auburn University. And with her today, um, well, a couple of things. Um, Dr. Brown has been helpful with us with um, the work-based learning program and career tech period uh, in an engineering program with Dr. Jackie Middleton um, for many, many years. So she is no stranger to Auburn High School at any point. But I do want to mention that she has a doctorate in electrical engineering from Vanderbilt, a master's also from Vanderbilt and her BS in electrical engineering from Tuskegee University. So she is a very diverse uh, lady. I do hope she will tell us about some of her experiences as we go through some of these, uh, so go through the session today, because these got a very interesting history as far as going through with engineering op opportunities. But she is here um, with the National Society of Black Engineering um, group from Auburn University. And I thank them all for being here today. And we thank them all for being here today and would like for her to introduce and tell us about the folks who are with us today and, and talk to us about engineering. And thank you, Dr. Brown. Okay, well, greetings. Uh, it is certainly uh, great to be here with you. And so um, as, a, as an engineer talking to students who have an interest in engineering, I'm always excited to talk about uh, my experiences, but I think something that's a little bit closer to home is we actually have a group of students who are pursuing their uh, engineering and computer science degrees currently at Auburn University who are actually going to share their experiences with you. And so we're hoping to get a, a great dialogue going and then to be able to answer any questions that you have. And I would say one of the unique features is if after the session is over, you have any of those burning questions that are left, you can certainly get in touch with um, Mrs. Marshall, who can certainly get in touch with us to be able to help us uh, to answer those questions you have. And so this is a great uh, chance and opportunity to look at and consider strongly engineering and computer science. Um, it really gives you that, that foundation for problem solving and critical thinking. And so in doing that, I will start uh, with our students. And so uh, we have students who are representing the National Society of Black Engineers, which is a professional organization um, nationally, but there's also a chapter here at Auburn University. And so um, certainly getting involved um, with engineering organizations is uh, key really to being successful with it. And each of the students are also um, um, advocate uh, participants within the Engineering Academic Excellence Program within the College of Engineering. So they'll share some experiences with both. So we'll start off letting them tell about who they are, where they're from, what major um, they're currently pursuing, and then also um, the roles that they feel in both the organization as well as the program. So we'll start off with Brittany. Yeah. Hi, guys. My name is Brittany Ransom, and I'm currently the Vice President of Auburn NSV Chapter, the National Society of Black Engineers Chapter. Um, I'm from Huntsville, Alabama, and I'm, I know. I'm currently a junior studying mechanical engineering with a minor in environmental design. Um, I guess uh, I've already said my role, but I'm also, like Dr. Brown said, uh, let's say, which rep a representative of the Academic Excellence Program here at Auburn. Okay. All right. Thank you, Brittany. Uh, Mateus? Good afternoon, everyone. Glad to be here. Uh, my name is Mateus Caldwell. Most of my colleagues know me by my nickname, Taz. I am currently a senior computer science major. I am also the membership chair of the Auburn Nesby chapter, as well as an ambassador for the Academic Excellence Program. So glad to answer any questions that you guys have for me today. Okay. And Bryce. Greetings, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. My name is Bryce Ellis. I am a sophomore majoring in software engineering. I'm from Huntsville, Alabama. Um, the leadership roles I have here, I am treasurer of the Auburn chapter of the National Society of Black Engineers. I'm an ambassador for the academic, uh, the engineering, uh, academic excellence program. And I'm also an engineering tutor here at Auburn for the College of Engineering. Okay. All right. So thank you all so very much for those introductions. And so um, really, what piqued your interest in the current major that you have? So what really drove that? 
I think I can start us off. So I've always been pretty fascinated with computers. My mother, she studied computer, computer science uh, growing up when she went through college. Um, there was always these enormously thick C++ books laying around the house. I always wondered what they were. Never really read them because I was too young at the time to understand what was going on. But I was always curious about uh, computer science in general. Uh, in 2015, I actually built my own uh, desktop computer from the individual components. And I really started delving into, you know, what does it mean to be a computer science? What, is it, what are all the different components mean? What is a motherboard? What is a CPU, et cetera? So it's always been something I've been fascinated with. And uh, I decided to go to Auburn because I thought that would give me the best pathway to fully explore uh, the areas of computer science. So I thought this would be a great opportunity for me to take advantage of. And uh, so far it is paying off. All right, thank you, Taz. Um, Bryce? Um, I chose software engineering because like Tez also said, um, I had a major interest in computers and like pretty much the, the science of my computers growing up. And so also I had a brother who um, graduated a year ago, actually. Uh, he graduated a year ago and he majored in computer engineering. So just growing up, he was also, it was both, we were just uh, interested in computers pretty much just growing up and stuff. And so he would always try to like teach me stuff about how computers worked and um, a big in like, a thing that really sparked my interest was pretty much once he got to college and as uh, both of us kind of like developed academically, he he showed how he used his computer skills and to pretty much like make a bigger impact on like pretty much like the world around the community around him. And I thought that was very interesting and it was something I'm very passionate about helping people and pretty much thinking big picture and focusing on things that's bigger than myself. So that was uh, something that got me to pretty much where I am today. And it's uh, been very enlightening and an amazing experience. Good. All right, All right Brittany. Um, the reason I chose study mechanical engineering was because I think all my life, I've like enjoyed creating things with my hands. I enjoyed my, my parents also, they always call me thinking, thinking, most of the time overthinking things. And so uh, I think what I enjoyed most about just like mechanical, mechanical engineering was the, uh, the possibility of being able to have that range of being able to go to any type of field really afterwards. Um, I didn't even know what engineering was until like around middle school. My teacher told me about it and I was like, oh, okay. Cause I thought like making things with your hands was like science. It's like a scientific type of job. Um, but engineering has really just challenged me. I know that's what I want even from high school until now is to be challenged in the way that I think and the way that I work. And uh, engineering does that for me daily. It does that here at Auburn University daily. And so that's what I enjoy the most about it. And I know that's going to challenge me to really rethink the world around me and be able to take my career to the next level even after I graduate. All right. Thank you, Brittany. Okay. And so kind of along those same lines, can you kind of talk about some of the things that you guys have been involved with as it relates to engineering, um, but also some of the things that may be outside of engineering that you've also been involved with um, at Auburn University as well as um, in other locations? So a big uh, involvement that I have uh, outside of my schoolwork is NSBE. It's a great organization to not only learn from uh, other colleagues in your major, you can also network outside of your school, essentially through uh, the many conferences that NSBE offers. And so it's given me an avenue to increase my academic skill level, as well as to talk to different companies that they have at their career fair. So NSBE is a, is a a huge one. Also, uh, I am a part of ACM, which is Auburn's coding uh, club. So it's another place to kind of help develop my coding skills. Uh, I will say this uh, to any uh, of the uh, high schoolers that don't be discouraged if you feel like you can't code. Uh, I didn't actually start writing code until I was in college. So just because you haven't been writing code for, say, 10 plus years or no, only if, uh, maybe one or two languages. Don't let that discourage you. Uh, you're not the only one. Uh, it is a very daunting task. Learning a new coding language is basically like learning a completely uh, foreign language. 
So don't let that discourage you from, you know, going after your dreams because you can do it. And I'm in a testament to that. I'm so far doing pretty well and uh, my coding classes and learning a, uh, quicker than I ever thought I could. So uh, Nesby coding clubs, stuff like that, highly recommend you get involved with it. It can really, especially if you're having trouble in your courses, they really help you get through those um, hurdles um, that you may not be able to get through by yourself. So. Okay. All right, Bryce. Um, Thanks, Taz. I'm also uh, involved in Nesby and heavily, heavily involved in Nesby. And so uh, with a club like that, um, I say that was very influential to me because that's pretty much where um, I mostly kind of found my grounding once I got to Auburn because as a freshman, you know, it can be a very scary experience. Like you just get to the campus and it's, you know, huge. It's like that, literally thousands of people just like walking around and especially within the College of Engineering, it's, uh, you know, because growing up and stuff, you'll hear throughout um, your incoming college experience, like, oh, you know, it's gonna be a very competitive field and you hear all these different type rumors and, you know, things to look out for. And it can be a lot once you, once you first get here, but especially me being in SB, I just learned that they, everyone has their own path that they take. And so it was, it was making things a lot easier because that way you can pretty much specialize how you want to go about your academic career and also about your personal life. Cause it's not only about school, but it's about growth and that growth as a person. And that is a huge thing that has benefited me. And with that, you learn lots of things. And so then you can apply to different places. So what I chose to do, I, once I, once I was in Nesby, just as a general member, I knew I wanted to, like I said, be a part of something bigger than myself, which is why I chose to run for an executive board position. And then also, uh, use those skills to try to be an, um, an ambassador for, we call it AP, and then also using those skills for uh, my tutoring job now here for the uh, engineering college. And so it's basically just like helping take those skills I learned here in, um, in these different clubs applying to my everyday life, which has been uh, very helpful for me. Yeah. All right, Brittany. Um, I guess before I go into like what I'm involved in, I definitely do want to echo what Bryce was saying. Uh, a lot of people here like are studying engineering, but it's really like important for you to find out what your interests are in engineering because there are like so many different programs you could be, you could be a part of, so many different clubs. So you really want to be able to get involved early so you get a feel about who you are as an engineer, what you want to bring to the table when you graduate, and ultimately what you want to learn that extends beyond engineering even. Um, right now, um, I'm part of the, you know, like I said, vice president of National Society of Black Engineers ambassador for, and an ambassador for the Academic Excellence Program. And that was the reason because I really want to be a part of elevating the education and professionalism of minority students and specifically also African-American students. And so that's what I want to be a part of. And being part of the vice president position, I know I'd be able to be the person that in charge of inviting people to come speak to our members, inviting companies to come speak, um, and so our, our NSBE members can get jobs and get opportunities like that to really speak to it. Um, I also know, um, also like, I guess also going back, uh, right now I'm currently also the president of the, another program called the Grand Challenges Scholars Program, which really helps, um, just really encouraging students to really extend their learning outside of a classroom and to really get them involved in the research and getting them outside the classroom to really um, go after different shadowing positions in, a, in something other than engineering so they can be able to tap into a different way of thinking. Um, I think also, I guess going back to freshman year, uh, I definitely recommend um, starting getting involved early maybe with one or two organizations, um, depending on who you are. And I say depending on who you are, because uh, I, I'm the type of, well, I was the type of person, I still am, that gets into like a bunch of different organizations at first. I, like I was in like seven or eight my freshman year. Definitely a, a bad idea. But um, what I did was like I tried to find different things I'm interested about, like within not only engineering, but also Auburn. I got in things like Emerge, which is a leadership program here at Auburn. I got into things like an engineering program called TPEG, which is like the theme park engineering group. Didn't know that was a thing. But that's so cool because we've basically made roller coasters out of ideas for different theme parks because engineers are a very big part of that process. And um, I know currently I have a minor in environmental design because, like I said, I really enjoy tapping into ways of thinking. And so being able to have that design aspect of thinking as well as the, the engineering version and that combining them really I feel I feel like, you know, starts a new innovative way of thinking that I really want to utilize in my career. And so I would definitely say um, remember to when you're picking organizations or things to get involved in, 
really remember like what you what your interests are in engineering so you can you can pursue those and um and yeah being involved really teaches more about yourself because you realize how you what you people how you think for yourself and how you deal with things especially with like COVID-19 happening now how you really um rearrange organizations or yourself really to fit this new dynamic okay thank you so um could each of you all talk about some of those experiences right as you were finishing high school and about to st or finishing um, uh, your previous university? And then once you started Auburn, what are some of those experiences that you engaged in and kind of share some of those? So right as you're finishing or right before you're getting ready to get started, what are some of those experiences that you guys have had? So I was actually at my prior institution. Uh, I should have mentioned this earlier, but I am a transfer student. I already have an associate's degree from Central Alabama Community College. I was actually a senator for the Student Government Association. So I was already active in um, clubs at my prior institution. SGA was really nice. Um, it allowed me to help manage different events that uh, the uh, uh, the college was having like uh, they had this like Oktoberfest festival where they had like huge slides. We had like a rock climbing wall. So being able to kind of help micromanage where everything was going to be placed and how uh, everything was going to play out was really it was really enlightening. Uh, it, it showed me that you can have no matter how small it is, you can have impact and change in an institution. And so that was um, one of the big uh, leaps for me. So it really, after I got my degree uh, from CAC, uh, I immediately knew that I wanted to get involved in an Auburn organization. At, the, at that point in time, I didn't know what existed. Um, but when I got to campus, I got an email from AEP and immediately jumped on that opportunity to get involved with that organization best decision that I've made at all over and so far because that led to everything else pretty much. So as soon as you get an opportunity, uh, once you get to Auburn, um, just take advantage of it. Don't wait on anything to to just happen. You got to really take the initiative and really show up because showing up is half the work. If you can show up, everything else kind of just falls into place for you. Um, let me see what else. The REU, if you don't mind sharing, Taz. Ah, yeah, I should have should have started with that. So uh, immediately after I got my um, associate's degree, uh, well, before that, I, I applied for an REU at um, which stands for Research Experience for Undergraduate for those who are not initiated, and I applied to Ole Miss Computational Chemistry REU. Now, as I've mentioned earlier, I'm a computer science major. So why would I apply for a chemistry, uh, computational chemistry REU? Well, at the time, I was wondering the same thing myself. I didn't know where the correlation was. But as soon as I got there, I realized that it doesn't matter what field that you go into. You're going there to learn how to do research, regardless of the field that you're in. And surprisingly enough for me, there's a lot of coding in computational chemistry and a lot of work with computers and Linux, for instance, the operating system. So there it really, really enhanced my educational experience uh, in ways that I can't even really describe. Uh, for those who are interested in graduate studies, I highly recommend an REU. Um, it really shows you that you, you know more than you actually do you are capable of doing high level research. Um, so, <clears throat> excuse me, but yeah, the REU was, <coughs> oh, excuse me, the REU was very, very uh, good for me. And um, yeah, other than that, um, yeah, that's pretty much what I have. Okay, thank you. Um, Bryce, you mind talking about the um, the summer before you started at Auburn? Uh, yes. So, uh, like piggybacking off of what Tad said, a big thing was um, after I recently graduated, I 
um, I just knew to take the initiative because taking initiative, I learned what I learned was, you know, you, well, it's kind of, you think of it as a cliche, it's like what you put in is kind of what you get out, but that's a genuinely a true thing. And so um, one of the, one of the uh, experiences I got to have was the uh, Summer Breach program that was uh, hosted by the Academic Excellence Program, which is basically, for me, which I think was the first year, Dr. Brown, it was like a four-week program. So, you just, right? so yes, my class, we had um, we had the first uh, session where it was, like a, it was a four-week program where basically it was kind of just like, a, it was, some of it was like an intro to like what college, what you would keep, like what you could expect the college like as far as like academically. And then a huge part of it also was um, building your professionalism because I know for me coming out of high school, you would think, you know, like you know, certain things about um, how the real world, the real world works as far as, uh, especially as far as engineering is concerned. But I know when I got there, it was kind of like this whole new thing. It was, but it was also a great experience because I got to learn, um, I got to, well, I got to network with uh, actually like the, like the heads of like these huge companies that you hear about like on TV and stuff. Cause, we were sponsored by Alabama Power, so you know, a uh, big thing was we got to tour their companies, and um, another one we got to do, we got to visit Southwire, which um, I am still talking to. Well, me personally, like one of the projects I'm working on is uh, I'm help, I'm trying to help develop a uh, internship uh, program with Southwire uh, for well, starting in January 2021. So that's one of the things I got to work on, and it, it was all because of the. Uh, all because of the um, four week program that I got to do. Because when you when I was on this program, I got to just meet a whole lot of different people, and you got to see like these actual engineers, and you get to see like it's not just business all the time, and like these actual real people who had a uh, similar college experience like what like I'm having now, um, and you get to hear their stories and stuff, and just learn a whole lot of new things. And also, a huge thing was um, when I first got to college officially in the fall of, well, in August, it, was, it wasn't like I was just stranded down there. It was like 30 to 40 people that I knew um, all, pretty much automatically. So that was a huge help. So I didn't feel like I was alone. And uh, it was it was a very smooth transition because of that. So that's definitely something I recommend if you do choose to come to Auburn, uh, definitely looking at that. And um, more of the story is just basically take the initiative early and um, because that way it'll allow you to not only build your, you know, your professional career, but your academic career as well. All right. Thank you, Bryce. Um, Brittany, if you want to share a little bit about your pre-starting Auburn experience, but also your internship. Okay. Um, yes, when I first uh, you know, started Auburn, I guess it was definitely different for me because, first of all, like this is the size of Auburn in general, we have like 30,000 plus students. And like, uh, definitely like, you know, a lot of students in engineering college as well. And I guess me, I graduated with, out of with like seven people in my high school. No, oh, actually in my class and then like 30 people in my high school. So it was kind of weird having go to class with people with like, there are 200 people in the class and it's like, you know, three times as big as your own high school in general. So that was like a weird awakening. Um, but being able to go into that and be able to, um, have these uh, new experiences was amazing. I know, um, even from AEP, I remember when I first was touring Auburn, um, I was able to get a tour from Dr. Brown, and I was able to go to the through the same experience that uh, Bryce did with the Summer Bridge program, and that was amazing. Uh, like you were saying, being able to know people that um, going into your freshman year, having already known people and made those connections, and already have like know what cl different classes from the first month or so was amazing. You had to have that experience. Um, so AP definitely helped out in that aspect. Um, as far as like my internships and stuff, I got a, I had my first internship this past summer with Shell, a uh, gas company. We were planning on um, being in, um, it's supposed to be in Houston, Texas, but because of, you know, COVID-19, everything was different, which I'm super thankful that I had an internship in the first place. That was amazing. Um, but instead of 12 weeks, it was cut short to six weeks. And what we did, um, uh, I think, I think the awesome thing about it was because it was virtual, we were open to working with different types of teams, not just teams from Houston, Texas. So I worked with a team from Canada, and it was really cool. Uh, fun fact, apparently people with Canadian accents are from West Canada. 
not East Canada, my people who I know work in East Canada, they're like, oh, they're highly offended. Um, but yes, um, so um, working with people from Canada, it was really cool being able to work with, with um, actual um, people who were basically in a different country than me and um, being able to see what was happening. And what I did was like, I had really just um, developed my communication really for the most part, because almost like a video game where it was like, I was told, okay, this is what you need to do. I had developed a matrix system to figure out what we were doing, like we were drilling into sales rocks to get like oil. What what's um, we're thinking about the best method of doing that, and so I had to communicate through my supervisor, then communicate with, like different people who were sipping the different um, oil and water to be you know filtered to different um, sites and third parties, and so I had to be a be the, the liaison between all of that. And so definitely, I feel like virtually um, uh, virtual interns for the most part lots involve lots of communication, and that's something that I definitely had to develop a lot for this past summer. And that's really helped me now as vice president of NSV, being able to speak to members every week. And so um, I definitely recommend, um, even like internships can come from everywhere like NSV. We have our conferences twice a year, a fall regional conference and a national conference. You can get internships from that. And AEP, we have like co companies constantly coming every year to, just to, for you, like for my students. And so then um, that's what a lot of internships and jobs come from. And um, also, just don't be afraid to also look outside. I do like the Auburn um, Auburn Engineering Program. We have a career fair that comes once a year, and even just putting yourself out there to different um, other programs and be able to not be afraid to put your resume out there, even if you think like, oh, I don't have all the single qualifications that they ask for. It's like still go for it. A lot of companies are really looking for people who are enthusiastic and who are willing to learn. And so, if you're willing to learn and and like willing to put yourself out there, they will accept you just because of. Just like your grit. So I would say don't be afraid of that. And um, that's where I really like from my internship. Okay. So now, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Dr. Round, but I really want to touch on the yeah. RU uh, one more time because I, I feel like I really understood that uh, even if you're not interested in going to graduate school, an REU is literally life changing. Being under the guidance of a legitimate scientist. Uh, for instance, my uh, director was Dr. Gregory Schumper. He works for the chemistry department at Coulter at Ole Miss. It is indescribable how much you actually learn there. It is one of the most invaluable experiences that I've had to, uh, that I've been able to uh, obtain and it really elevated my academic level uh, beyond what I even expected. Um, before I had this RU experience, um, I had no intentions of even going to graduate school. And now I feel like this is something that literally anybody can do just from that experience. And to top it all off, um, the National Science Foundation in itself pays for everything for you. So literally all you have to do is show up, give it your best effort, and you get paid a lot of money to learn uh, and to grow. Uh, academically. So I cannot stress enough the importance of getting an RU opportunity because a lot of people don't get those opportunities. I was very fortunate enough to uh, to be awarded uh, the opportunity, uh, but it's very rare for a community college uh, student to earn those opportunities. So if you're blessed enough to get an RU, please accept it. It will change your life, undoubtedly. So, Mrs. Marsh, I do want to be uh, mindful of time. Are we transitioning into uh, questions or? Well, I see that there, well, we, as far as the participants, I've got just a couple of questions that I just have out there that I can ask if I would. Um, mm -hmm. As far as the professional um, organization, which NASB, I know you all touched on it a little bit, but it's, the, what what would be one of the main advantages that you feel like you have as far as being a NASB member, NASB member, excuse me, instead of over someone who's not? What are some things that, that your organization is offering you that students who may not be involved uh, would not be able to have? I feel like the biggest thing like NASB is that not only the fact that, you know, he brings like, you know, companies in, you get that professional as well as educational, like advantage over other students, but it's also like, you know, to have that almost family environment. You have like a big group we call it like, like family, a UNSB family. And like, even when you come like, hope or whatever we get back to in person, when you come 
and stuff, everyone like knows each other. And if they don't know you, they're introducing themselves. And then we have like different groups you can be a part of, like committee members that help out with um, the e-board and doing different um, events and like coming together for those. Um, I feel like, yeah, that's the thing. It's a family environment that we come from it. Being able to know people who are interested in the same things and who are wanting to elevate themselves in engineering. So almost like even the same thing for academic program as well. But being able to come together and to study for classes together or to go out and eat together after we studied or after we like passed the test that we've all been struggling with for like, you know, days or weeks. It's like being able to have that people, the people, that group you can go to um, is just amazing in itself. And so, um, and definitely when we have like our different events, having to go to events, having people to go to events with and with people to really um, um, hang out with, even like both study with and hang out with is awesome. So that's why I feel like Nesby brings to the table. Awesome. And I'll see if Mrs. Hannah has any questions that she may have that may she may want to address. Sure. Thank you all very much for your time right. today. This is really, really helpful. Um, just a couple of quick questions. First of all, do you have to be an engineering or a computer science major to be a member of NSBE? Uh, yeah, no. Be an engineer to be in NSBE. Okay. Also, um, I love the way you all touched on the importance of getting involved on campus. Um, I have heard it said around Auburn University that if you are not involved in a campus organization, then you're not looking because they are available to everyone everywhere. Um, can you tell um, some of our students how are you all staying connected given that we are in this virtual environment right now? So, you know, think about especially freshmen who are new to Auburn University. Um, and so they haven't had that real Auburn experience yet that you all have had. So how are you staying connected given that you can't have large gatherings and, and see people face to face quite as much? Um, that, uh, my sister, she's, she's like, just came to Auburn. She's a freshman right now. So she's going through everything new too. And so I think for her, it's really like, um, it's really about like getting connected via like, um, other mediums, like besides like, there's also social medias you can get involved with. And even like walking around campus, there's like posters everywhere that, that say, oh, follow us on social media or follow us on AU involved. So when you get that um, type of notification, it's like she even got things before even class before class even started. Like they were like, oh, we're having an ice cream event here on on, on campus green. So she went there, met new people. For Nesby, we have different um we have our you know, on social media on Instagram. We post like our events that we're having for different meetings. Click on that, you go to a meeting on Tuesday nights, and be able to like okay get involved with other people and have like be able to see companies through like through Nesby. So I feel like a lot of it comes from. Um, really just like, like say, like if you aren't, it's really easy to find different organizations if you just like follow them on social media or really like just like, even just talking to people, like whether that's in your class or like some teachers even promote different organizations that are on campus. And so even, and um, also doing your own research, really like on uh, AU Involved, all the organizations are like listed out, like in alphabetic order and there's like over 500 on, the, on there. Just find them. Everyone's open to contact now for as far as email. Everyone has their email on there, all the presidents, all the vice presidents. And so if you just contact, say, hey, I'm interested in this, then there, you can automatically get plugged in really quick, just like that. So, and if you really want to start your own organization, you can also do that too. All you need is three people and you can start your own organization. <laughs> your 500 isn't enough. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> okay. Um, Mrs. Hannah, did you have anything else on there? Anything else? Mrs. Hannah. So sorry, I keep flipping on and off with my mute. Um, I just said thank you all very much. You guys are awesome. We appreciate your time. Okay, and with that, we're going to get ready to close out the session. I do want our participants and our folks who are looking at the video to do um, just to reiterate what um, one of our gentlemen said that don't be discouraged if you cannot write code as an engineer or someone wanting to go into the field, because there's a lot that you will learn when you do get to the university, but just having an interest there. I did appreciate the fact that uh, we talked about transfer options. So if you are a transfer student, there is an opportunity for you to get involved. I was a transfer also to Auburn University, and I felt I was a part of a, a, one of the organizations too, and the president. So there's lots of things for transfer students to make college viable for them too, as they're moving on through. 
Also, I did love the fact that you were mentioning to look at the different types of engineering that are out there. Uh, my brother-in-law is at Virginia Tech. He started off in electrical and then he went into mining. So and he really does enjoy that. So there's all kinds of things. And I know that your organization does a really great job of of explaining those things to students, too. And then lastly, as I will chime in with Mrs. Hannah, we appreciate so very much um, you all coming and speaking with us today and, and speaking with our students. And we appreciate you expanding the uh, information about Auburn's en engineering program for our Auburn High School students. And with that, we will again thank you and sign off. And thank you, Dr. Brown, too, as always. You have just been a great supporter of our career tech programs, our engineering and work-based learning. You have a good afternoon, everybody.